exercise 12. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality in Creo Parametric 2.0 when importing DWG files. In this case, we're going to build this little wheel that you see here from an imported uh, DWG. So let's begin. First, go to File, Open. Down below here under Files, make sure you scroll down to about the middle and you'll find DWG. And find the Exercise 12 DWG, which you could download at Bertanu1.com. It's B E R T A N U X dot, uh, with the number 1.com. Open it up. When it prompts you to open it, you want to open it into a part file. And then use the templates. If you don't use a template, it doesn't bring in the planes or the datum planes, so you have to add them. Not a huge deal, but um, it does take some time. So you're better off just going with the default. And you could give it a name here, E12, and hit OK. Also, you might have noticed that my screen is very dark. Uh, for this DWG file, I had actually changed it under File, Options, and under System Colors. Instead of the default or black and white, I went with dark background, and that gives it a dark background, so you can see this easier. You could always change it back. Just remember it's under File, Options. Once in here, you'll see that you have your datum planes already created for your front, top, and right. What we might want to do is actually get those all centered. The front plane is already centered for us, but we want to actually focus on building this using a revolve feature. So what you can do here is you could go to the datum or the plane tool here, select, for example, this plane right here, which is uh, the right plane. Actually, I'm sorry, this is the top. And then you'll see a little point in here on this DWG file. You're not always lucky enough to have a center point, but if there's arcs and things, they're usually there. So you could go ahead and you could click on that, and you can actually see it uh, in this case. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to click on the line itself. Oops. Depending upon what you select, you're going to get different effects. Let me click on this. Holding control, you want to align it to the plane that's there, the top plane. And you'll see it will offset. So I had to hold control and select both the point and the plane. Hit OK. Now we'll go back to the plane tool again. Select the right plane. And this time hold control and select that point that you have there. And that will create a plane that's offset, dead center. Hit OK. I usually recommend just hiding these uh, older planes, like the right plane. Just right click on it. Actually, uh, click on it once the left mouse button, then right click and hide. Do the same with the top plane here. Click once with left, then release, right mouse button, click and hide. You have to hold down on that right mouse button for a good second or so. Okay, now we have our planes all centralized. Now we could actually get down to business here with, with this uh, geometry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to revolve. Now you could start a sketch and copy the geometry, then go to Revolve. I'm going to go with the Revolve method here. Just click on that. Select this front plane to start your sketch. Okay, now I'm going to go and um, I'm going to select some re the References tool here and select this plane right here as a reference, a horizontal one. And now we could go ahead and use the Project tool and we'll go with loop. Sometimes you get lucky with loop and it goes ahead and carries itself around. In this case, uh, I tested it earlier and it didn't really work that well, or even chain, chain. Sometimes you'll get lucky. It depends on the geometry that's imported. So in this case, just go along and select the geometry around there until it all changes color. And you can see you've converted it. You can also convert this little entity here. If, uh, actually, no, I'd avoid that. Actually, you don't need to. Hit close, hit OK, and now we just have to select that little blue line there to revolve around. And it should just revolve the geometry around. Now sometimes there's gaps, depending upon the geometry that you have, there's little gaps between it, and you might have to fix that by drawing a new line in or something. You'll see that in just a few moments, what you do when you get geometry that's a bit sloppy out of an older CAD system or a legacy CAD system and how to work with that. But in this case, it worked pretty well. 
and we could see it uh, recreated the geometry as we like it. So we could just hit the green check mark to apply. And there's our wheel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and take one of these little cutouts here and copy it over onto this surface so we can cut through it with this uh, plane. So let's begin first. Select the front plane and start to sketch. What we need to do is we're going to actually try and um, copy over the geometry using the project tool. So click on project. You can just do single. This one doesn't chain tool either. Um, these are splines. And actually, let me cancel there for a second. Uh, I want to show you sometimes splines could really be a challenge to work with. Um, they're not too bad. But basically, if you want to know what you're dealing with, if you go to analysis, you could go to measure. And like, for example, if you go to diameter, you'll see that anything that's a, a radius or a diameter highlights. If it doesn't highlight, like look at over here, or here. That's an indication it's probably a spline or a polyline or something, uh, something that you traditionally might not want. It might be difficult to work with. But we're going to go ahead and convert this geometry anyway. So I'm going to zoom out, select that front plane again, start my sketch. And now I'm going to go to project. And I'm just going to go ahead and select this geometry as such. And hit close. Now, um, at this point, we're just going to go ahead and we can select the geometry we want. So just click and drag a fence surrounding the geometry. And you could go up here to copy. Or you could hit Control C for a copy. Now hit OK. You can just leave it there for later in case you might need it again. But over here, now we want to drop it on Datum 2. So let's click on Datum 2 and start sketch. Or you could actually go right to extrude because we know we want to use that geometry to cut. So I'm going to go with extrude actually. Either way, it's fine. All right. Now if your geometry is laying on its side, uh, remember you always have the ability to right click and you can go to select orientation and select vertical. And you just select this vertical center line here. If it was laying on its side, it would rotate. But I think we're going to be okay with this. So uh, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to click and hit Control V and then click again. And it should drop in my geometry. Unfortunately, though, it scales in. I'm not sure why it scales it, but um, it's easy to fix. Right up here is all the data or information we can plug in. Let's type in 1 here for the scale factor so it's equal to, it's 1 to 1 basically. Now what we can do is we could maneuver this, but before we maneuver it, let's see something. There's this nice arc at the top here that has a center point, which we knew was locked into the dead center of the wheel. Over here you have a nice enter reference to move entity. Click on that. Now you can actually um, click on these planes here, and then um, you have the ability to rearrange this. Now, the last time I was able to click right on the point here and it worked for me, but unfortunately here I'm not getting that. So we might have to do a couple other little things here to get that to highlight. Uh, in the meantime, we could actually use dimensions and such to lock this in. You do have the ability to drag it as well. Oh, that, there we go. Uh, if you drag this around, you'll notice that um, it only moves certain areas. So like if I click on this vertical, it will move up and down. Actually, it does move left and right too. But um, the intent here is to get this actually located right on here. And let's, um, let's go back to sketch here and see if we could add some references. I'm just going to quit out of there. I'm going to first select some references just so I can get a center point here. And center lines. Now let's try that again. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control V to paste, click on it, set it back to 1. All right, here we can see it has the ability to move. Now let's try and get that in here.
Okay, just by maneuvering around, I'm not sure why this did this, but it did snap to the center point. Now I'm able to click on it. I think maybe it might be because it was on the surface of the model. Regardless, um, I'll try that again. But basically, now you can see you can actually snap it to the center by grabbing that center point once you select this little enter reference to move and you're able to select that point. I think what was the problem was that I was actually over the surface, so it wasn't letting me select it. I had to first move it out of the way. And now it's locked in. Now at this point, you can try and extrude it, or you can hit the green check mark since we've got it locked in place. Now you see the spline points. Um, this is where it gets a little sloppy because basically it's not necessarily Creo that's maybe the issue so much as it was the geometry that you brought in from the other CAD system. The translation didn't work so well. And here if you see I try and extrude it, I don't get any options. So there's sometimes some cleanup you have to do here. So we're going to go to the, um, the AB button here and I'm going to go back to front. Oops, I'm sorry, not front, we want to right. Okay, and I'm going to change some of these from those types of splines to something else. I'm going to click on the spline, hit delete. And what I could use is the arc tool. I could click on this point, drag it directly to the left. It'll bring up a tangent arc. I could connect it to the bottom. I'm going to middle click just to get out of that tool. Click on the spline, hit delete. Don't just click on the spline point. You actually have to click on the spline itself, hit delete. Do the same over here. and bring out the arc. Now, when you middle click here, now we can see we have the shaded geometry. So apparently there might have been a little distance gap between those splines. Um, but it's, we're not quite done yet here. We want to ensure that these are smooth. Most likely they're a tangent. So we're going to go to the uh, tangent tool up here. And we're going to select the spline and the arc and make those two tangent as well as the spline and the arc on this side. You see the little T's that appear. Or tangent. Now we could rotate a little bit. We could go to extrude. Let's just get here. Let's hit OK there. All right. Now at this point, if this is going to be a cast wheel, you probably want to add draft while you're extruding, and that's easy enough to do over here. You can go to um, options and there's add taper. You'd be able to add a taper. Unfortunately, um, at that point, you can only add it on one side. I like I know I like to usually go on both sides and cut it at the same time. That's a limitation currently in uh, Creo here. But we could add the taper and then we can mirror the feature over to the other side with a cut. But we're not going to be able to do that. So I'm not going to add the taper right now just to keep it simple. I'm going to uh, go in this case in both directions and make sure you select remove material and hit OK. Now there is also a through all. I'm just going to keep it easy though. I know it's going to it's never going to get thicker than seven inches, so I'm pretty safe to say to leave it at that. And hit OK. All right. At this point, we're going to go ahead and add some chamfers. There were some chamfers that were 0.125. Select like this edge here, this edge, the green check mark. And you can see the yellow geometry starting to pierce through from the section that was on the original drawing. And that's kind of a guide to let you know you're, you're on the right track. You're doing it right. Okay, now finally we're going to go ahead and pattern this. Now if you notice, if you try and, and we've learned this before with patterns, you have to hold control and select both features, the chamfer and the extrude. And uh, then right click and group them together. Now you can use the pattern tool. Instead of dimension, we'll use axis. Select the center axis that's there. We're going to put in five instances and 360 degrees divided by five equals 72 degrees for the spacing. Hit the green check mark to apply. And there you have it. Now, if you just want to verify again, you can see the yellow geometry piercing through. That's a good sign, but uh, that you're you've got it correct. But if you want to even check it further, go to view, go to section. And select this top front plane here. Make a section through and just verify that the original geometry is all in alignment and it was done to the customer specification. Now remember, sometimes drawings are scaled differently. Uh, so if it's like 
on half scale. You have to be aware that you're going to have to scale this uh, appropriately inside Creo or scale the, the drawing. And that concludes exercise 12.